All right, let's get into today's teaching. Today I want to teach on whose yoke are you carrying? Whose yoke are you carrying? All right, even before I, I get into the teaching of it, when we mention the word yoke, most of us don't even know what that means. Okay, most of us have just taken the word yoke and call it a burden. <clears throat> but the yoke is what was, um, what was put over the cattle. Okay, you remember that if you take the oxen and that, that wooden thing that was put over the two leading uh, cattle were known as the yoke. That was known as the yoke. And that would then give them the direction or able to, for the guy who's steering them to give them uh, control as to which way to turn the, uh, the animals. And so the ox wagon is a very good example where you put the two yoke over uh, the yoke over the front two animals and the rest would just follow. And so... That yoke is what we are talking about. The eight yoke is a burden or a weight that gets put on them, all right, that they need to carry. Now, this is the problem. So many of us as Christians are finding Christianity tough. So many Christians are finding it like really it's a bunch of rules. And we, we got to watch all the time. Geez, did I make this mistake or did I make that mistake? Did I keep up with this? Did I keep up with that? And so I want you to know today that that is not how Christianity should be. You know, many people have asked me, how do I, uh, let's give you an example, how do I keep up the pace of the revelation and the stuff that I'm busy with? It's not difficult for me. Because I'm doing what God calls me to do and I'm anointed for that. So that's a flow. I get tired, physically tired, but it's not a burden. It's not like I go there and I go, oh yes, do I have to do this again? It's really a case of God, I want to do what I can do for the nation, like all of us need to do. Everyone needs to have that attitude, say, God, what can I do in my function? But that function should be easy, it should be a, 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 not a burden, it should be a flow in your life. So I want us to go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, and I want to help us today. Because I think many of us are carrying things that we should not be carrying. Many of us are, are trying to achieve stuff that God never called us to do. All right, and we got this weight on us and this expectation that you feel like, listen, um, how, do I, how do I keep going with this? Okay, so please don't, don't uh, make a mistake and think that, that um, God has intended us to carry this type of burden and this type of weight. Because it's not. It's never been what God has intended for the body of Christ. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now I want us to take that scripture because that's a very important scripture. Okay, and we're going to break it down and I'm going to help you with this because before we get out of here today, I need a weight coming off you. I need a weight, a burden, because Satan will use religion as a weight and make you feel guilty. You know, you could say you're serving God, but you don't think you're serving God good enough. And you feel like I must be doing more, and then you end up striving, and you're trying to uh, keep on doing things, and it's not um, producing what you should be producing. And I'm going to show you how the gospel should be done. It says, take my yoke upon you, right? Number one, it's Jesus' yoke. Okay, it's Jesus, take my yoke upon you, upon you, and it says, and learn from me. Now, what does learn from me mean? It means that Jesus wants to give us the new way of doing it. He did not say stick to a whole bunch of rules or tradition or the way that we were brought up. You know, I was brought up under the impression that if you did something wrong, Jesus was standing with a whip and he's going to sort you out. You better get in line. That's not true. In fact, the reverse is true. Jesus is sitting down and saying, I love you. Come to me. Yeah, I love you. I'm drawing you. I want my love to change you. How many of you know that you could serve somebody out of fear or you could serve them out of love? You could have a parent that was so strict that if you did anything wrong, they would hit you and whip you and that you do what they want out of fear. Or you could do it because I really love you and I want to help you and I want to be part of this and we all carry this together. And so God's 
um, intention is to love us and to draw us together. Not to whip us and put a heavy on us and put an expectation that we can't fulfill. And so he says, come and learn from me. How do I learn from God? I look at the New Testament scriptures. I see what God says. How does God say we must do it? You know, he says, my burden is light. And you go, well, my burden is definitely not light. Well, the Bible says, cast your cares on him. Because his yoke, his expectation is light. It's easy. Because he says, learn how to do this according to my word. And he says this, for I am gentle. He does not say that I'm the taskmaster and I'm going to throw that whip on you every time to get you to move. He's going to go gently draw you to your purpose. Draw you to the, to the goodness that he has. Draw you to who you should be. Don't ever think of God as an uh, unloving God and he hates you. Okay? He loves us and he wants us close. So my Christianity should be, God, I want to learn how to do this. But while I'm learning, you are giving me the, the, the mercy and the grace that I need. The grace, the supernatural ability to do it. And also the mercy where I mess up. And so God's saying, just come follow me. And don't, uh, don't sit down and expect a taskmaster. Because he says, I'm gentle and lowly of heart. What is lowly of heart? Lowly of heart means that he's humble. He's coming in as somebody, as a loving father would, and say, come, let me teach you. You know, it's like anything that you do. Your father will go and teach you. If you make a mistake, he will do it again. He'll do it over and over. You know, um, I remember growing up, one of the things that my dad and I, or the kids really loved, is we had a boat. We used to go river fishing. And my dad would teach us how to bait a, uh, a hook, how to cast a hook, uh, uh, cast a line. If we made a mistake, he didn't shout at us. He didn't sit down and go, yes, you stupid idiot child, how do you do this? You know, and when you are casting with a river rod, there's a little lever that you click over and then you cast. Sometimes you do that and, and it will look lock and the next second the cast would come and hit the boat. And... He wouldn't sit down, he'd go, listen, be gentle, hold it back. And he would take time to go over and over until we got it. God is like that with us. He is not coming to put a load on us and an expectation that we can't carry. He's saying, listen, my yoke is light. My expectation is easy. But listen to the result. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest in your souls. You will find rest in your soul. If you are sitting today and emotionally you are stirred up, emotionally um, it is heavy on you, how can you sit down and say that God is busy working in your life? You see, that is the cares of the world that are gripping us. And it is a lie if you have any burden because of Christianity. That's never been God's plan. You see, this is why I really have an issue with Christians who tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing all the time as a set of rules. You should act like this. You should be doing this. God never said that we must do that. The only person who, in your life who should be correcting you should be your leadership. Because they are the ones that are sitting down and taking care of your soul and say, be careful. And they should be doing it in love, even if you mess up solidly. Okay, let's say you end up as a leader and you've got people around you and you end up in adultery or something. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, it says, or 6, it says, if somebody falls, gently restore them. God's heart is gentle. God's heart is gracious. He says, come. And so this morning, I want us to get this picture that Jesus Christ wants us to be free of this burden, this heavy around us. 
When I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, it's because I love him and it's easy. He's leading me. He's directing me. Let's go back to our verse that we read this morning. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness in doing it right. And he does it for his own namesake. So that is how Christianity is. So today I want us to firstly renounce and reject this heavy burden that's on us. If you're feeling like Christianity is a burden and the serving God is heavy, reject that totally. All right, people are asking for the scripture, Galatians 6, verse 1. Now, if you are in the place where you have got issues in your soul, the Bible says we need to learn. And as you learn, you let go. All right. Today, I want us to allow the Spirit of God to take off every burden in Jesus' name and to bring a peace into our soul in the name of Jesus, to bring a peace into our lives and not allow religion and tradition to dictate in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you right now in Jesus' name that you love us. And on the night that you were betrayed, you took bread and broke it and, he, and you said, this is my body that was broken for you. Do it in remembrance of me. He says, take, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. Lord, I thank you that your body was broken for our physical and emotional healing. Lord, I thank you that your blood was shed for our salvation, provision and protection. But Lord, right now, as we come around the table, Lord, we ask you right now to forgive us of anything that we have done wrong, said wrong, wrong attitudes, wrong actions. But Lord, most of all, we ask you right now that you would come and just lift this burden of guilt off us, this burden of pressure. Father, we thank you that we could serve you with a light heart and an easy heart in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are in control and that you are moving by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your anointing that rests on every one of us. Lord, I thank you that you are leading us, you are directing us, and Lord, serving you is easy. And Lord, I pray right now that as we go, we are going to see the power of God move. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for the price that was paid. And Lord, as we take communion right now, we thank you that you have given us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, and to bring us into a place of fulfillment. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, let's partake together. Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the dunamis power of God. We release the dunamis power of God into our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we are healed in Jesus' name. We speak to every symptom. We command you to go in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we are healed right now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Folks, we are going to pray over the economy this morning. And we are going to pray God's blessing over our nation in the name of Jesus. And let's just pray right now. Lord, we thank you that as we come together, we can lift up our nation. We pray for every single person that is at work. We pray for their protection. We pray for blessings over every company in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit come and just move in every situation. Lord, I pray right now for a supernatural intervention of your spirit over every single business as we build altars and we establish the altars in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for a supernatural financial release into the economy. We pray for wisdom, guidance, and direction by your Spirit. Lord, I pray for every Christian business that we will move by your Spirit and have the word of the Lord in our mouth. Thank you, Lord, that if we're in a company, the company will be blessed because of our presence. Lord, we thank you right now that you will help us Lord, to bring solutions to the table 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray right now that you will move by your spirit over every single sector. Lord, that we will see an influx of the blessing of the Lord over every single sector in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your anointing in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that you will move by your spirit and there will be a shift. Lord, we come against this virus. We command this virus to die and to dissipate in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that from today we are going to see these numbers decrease in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your protection of every single person who is at work, every person that is moving out and going around. We pray for the school children this morning, Lord, that have to go back to their households. Father, we pray that you're going to help them with their education, Lord, that they are going to be able to cope and handle it. Lord, we pray for the families where so many of the children are stuck at home. Father, we pray your peace, protection, and blessing over the homes in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for our leaders that you'll give them the wisdom that they need to be able to do what they need to do, godly solutions to our nation. And we thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's do our declaration, folks. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won that I did not have to fight. All because of the blessing and the favor of the Lord in my life.